Thank you for staying with me. My name is Ngozi Adelaye, founder of Crunch Econometrics. For the continuation of my video on instrumental variables, I'm going to engage several estimations using OLS, IV, and two stately squares. Firstly, I'm going to start with a bivariate model, then I will expand to a multivariate model. For these estimations, we will be using the Woodridge MROS data. The link to that data is in the video description and it will take you to my ResearchGate profile where you can download the data. I have also provided the do file to support this analysis. Let me give you a peek view of the data and the do file. So here's the underlying data. It's a cross-sectional data. So once you get to my research grade profile, you can easily download the Excel format of this data. I've also provided the do file. You see it in the PDF form. All you have to do is to copy it to your state uh, do file and just replicate the analysis. So like I said, we are going to start with a bivariate model. So let us consider the problem of unobserved ability in the wage equation for working female adults. Equation one shows you a very simple model where the log of wage is a function of education and ability. But supposing that we have a proxy variable, IQ, that we can substitute for ability, then we are going to have a consistent estimator from the regression shown in equation two, where the wage is a function of education and IQ. Remember, we are using IQ as a very good proxy of ability. But what if such proxy variable is not available? That means ability will be included in the error term as we have in equation three. So because we cannot find a variable uh, called IV, that means ability will be part of the error term. So from equation three, we can clearly see that education and the error term will now have a correlation because ability is now included as part of the error term, making education to be an endogenous variable. Therefore, for us to have consistent estimators of beta naught and beta one, additional information is needed. And this can only be obtained from a new variable Z, which is the instrument. And the instrument must have two good properties, which I covered in the introductory part of this video. Z number one, must not be correlated with the error term, that is the covariance between them must be zero. And secondly, Z must be correlated with education, such that the covariance between the instruments and a duke is not equal to zero. Please make sure you have your paper and your biro so that you can jot down some of those things. Now, still on equation three, we have said before that Z must not be correlated with ability or any other factors affecting wage. Secondly, Z must be correlated with education. And you can actually use different proxies for ability. It doesn't have to be IQ alone. You can use a number of siblings, you can use social security, parents' education, distance to school, etc. But the good question will be, do these instruments satisfy the properties? So we are now going to begin estimations using the ordinary least squares approach. Still referring you to the underlying model where y is a function of x. Remember, we are using only a bivariate model just to keep it simple. Firstly, we are going to assume that x is exogenous, which implies that x is not correlated with the error term such that the covariance between x and u equals zero. Now, for us to solve this covariance, you can easily see from here that the covariance of x and u can also be substituted to reflect this. If you juggle around equation one and substitute for u, you are going to have y minus beta one x. Now solving this uh, small uh, equation, you are going to end up with covariance x, y minus beta one variance of x, okay? Now, solving for beta one, making beta one the subject of formula, you are going to end up with this equation. Okay, this is just basic statistics. Now, given that X is assumed to be exogenous, then beta one will yield unbiased and consistent estimates. 
So let us go to Stata and start with the OLS technique. So here is the do file which I've made available. Like I said, the link is in the description and um, it will take you to my ResearchGate profile where you can easily download it. It's on PDF form. All you have to do is copy it onto your do file. So here is the code to estimate uh, the OLS. Regress log of wage on education and I am providing for controlling for risk elasticity. The second line of the code is because I want to store the results for me to be able to present them in a tabular form. So I'm going to store the results in addition to estimating the model. And the third code is just for me to display the coefficient of beta. So I'm highlighting the three together and execute. So we have the results. This is the table for the first code right here. The second code here shows me that I have stored the OLS results. And here is just for me to display the coefficient of education. It's the same thing as shown in the table. So let me take you to PowerPoint to wrap this up. So now how are you going to interpret the results of the coefficient of edu? Remember, we are assuming it is exogenous, okay? So we can easily say that um, another year of education will result in a 10.9% increase in wages. Also remember that we are assuming that edu is exogenous. Therefore, beta one is unbiased and also consistent. But on the assumption that EDUC is endogenous, it will imply that EDUC will be correlated with the error term as seen in this covariance, okay? The covariance will not be equal to zero. If that is the case, we will then need to find an instrument Z that is correlated with the endogenous regressor EDUC, but not correlated with the error term, such that the covariance between the instruments and the error term equals zero. Note, since we are assuming that EDUC is endogenous, we are going to use further EDUC to serve as the instrument. Further EDUC must satisfy two properties, exogeneity and relevance, okay? So you can see right here, it must be exogenous and it must be relevant to the model. I explained all this in the introductory video, so I won't be able to go over them again. If you want to know the properties of a good instrument, please watch the first introductory video. There are other potential instruments that you can use, number of siblings, colored proximity, etc. Further readings, I'm suggesting these five textbooks, and there are also several textbooks out there that you can use to fully understand instrumental variables approaches. I have several articles where I've used instrumental variable. These are some of the papers. They are all uploaded to my ResearchGate profile. If you are interested, connect with me on ResearchGate and you will have access to these articles. Thank you so much for listening. This completes the OLS approach on our instrumental variables using cross-sectional data. Don't go away. My next video, I will touch on using an IV technique.